Hey guys, so this is the hybrid that I picked up. He is 75% uh, green, 25% yellow, anaconda. You can see there's a big, big difference here, you know, in that pier. And I didn't really notice as much, and Chase is the one who really pointed it out, because I almost thought he was green, until you get these side by side. This is, I mean, guys, this is crazy. I mean, the amount of cool colors that you get on these animals when you combine them. And I know a lot of you aren't a big fan of hybrids, but uh, I definitely want to get me a green now just because I want to, I like how cool Chase's looks. And, uh, but he's Spitfire. I mean, like they say, these anacondas are a bit more Spitfire when they're hybrids. I mean, he is Spitfire for sure. He's not as chill as my yellow, and he's not as nice as Chase's green. Got a little bit of blood already right there. Yeah, he, him out. yeah he tagged Chase right off the rip. But, I mean, it's really, it's really cool to actually be able to get this, be able to work with these guys. And he's just not as chill as Tango at all. I haven't named this guy yet. You guys got any name ideas? Let me know. I almost wanted to name him Jungle. Like, his head almost looks like a jungle retic. Yeah. Doesn't it? Like, mm -hmm. it's like kind of, it's so crazy looking. I really like how the yellow, how it's more like a uh, mustard color. Versus, I wonder what he's going to look like in Shed, after he comes out of Shed. Mm -hmm. Or when he Sheds. I bet he's going to look even more bright when he fires uh, up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so how long ago did he Shed? Did, didn't you tell me you just recently got a Shed from him? I just got a Shed from him about... I want to say about a month ago. They're very slow growing, so it's pretty typical to get a shed here, here and there, every once or every one or two months. So I'm you're like, only getting average in like six sheds a year from him, really. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that, that really goes to show you how slow they are. Mm -hmm. I really think there's a difference when you add to this bit of yellow, like you said, how yellows grow a little faster. Yeah, I think that's having an influence to a degree on him because he seems like he's a little bit more bigger body mm -hmm. well and, and another plus side um, I made I made a comment earlier about how green air sure both both species are sub aqua sub aquatic and whatnot but greens are gonna be more aquatic than the yellows and not just because of environmental changes in different places of South America where they originate from but also these guys these guys, well, not typically this hybrid here, but more on the yellow side. The, of course, the yellow anacondas don't get as big, usually maxing out about 14 feet on the big females. And yeah, that's like the biggest one I've seen. And, yeah. and, of, and of course, these guys being the sky's the limit when you have a female, and males maxing out at typically about 14, 15 foot, just on the male side. But a reason why these guys tend to be more aquatic is not only because of their camouflage, really helps but also when females get to their very max size of like 18 19 feet or even you know of course mythologically bigger there <laughs> there comes he a point a there, there comes a point in time because these guys are the heaviest snakes on the planet and that actually becomes an issue to them believe it or not a lot of the uh, the big stuff if during the rain, uh, during the dry seasons in like Venezuela and stuff, uh, the very monster anacondas they um, if they stay on land for way too long at like months at a time, their body actually crushes their lungs. Really? Yeah. Because of how heavy they are, and they use that water to maintain the balance of their mass. So that's explain why like Byron bar so, the animals always trying to eat the water. It's helping that mass. Exactly, and. All the giants that they catch are mostly found in the water or in the river. Yeah, it's like a video they're, I've they're, ever seen. They're very, they're very rare to find the big monsters outside of the water, usually during breeding seasons or hunting. But also, of course, these guys will hunt from the water. Whoa. Whoa, yeah. he almost grabbed me a bit. <laughs> he's he's trying to... See, guys, he was, he was doing this every time I've been getting him out lately. Like, and I got some that, I got a cool animal here for you guys that Chase brought today. So, that does a bit of the same thing. But, I mean, this guy, I gotta tell you, he runs up the hook at me. 
Yeah. He uh, he tries to come to bite me. He, he don't want to come see me. I mean, he wants and, to... And of course, these guys, you know, any of these anacondas are not going to give you any sign or indication that they are about to strike. One little tip that's been shown that Joe's actually proved to me is the puffing of the throat. But when they're resting their head on you and they just instantly give you a 180 bite, you're not going to see that throat puff because yeah. it's up against your skin I had or him on, on the floor. I had him on my shoulders. And he climbed up on me while I was holding my yellow female guys, and all of a sudden he came around my neck, just grabbed me right on my chin. From out of nowhere. I mean, there was no sign. I mean, just now when he almost bit me, I could feel it that he was tensing up a little bit, but it wasn't a big trigger like that. Like, yeah, he, he was real close to getting me, and he wants to get me. And I'm not sure if he's going to chill out as feeding goes on. He will chill out as time goes it on. It's just so crazy that... Not, the only, color. Not, not not even the color. It's just like w with what happened with you just right there, it really shows with how much muscle and mass that these guys have that they don't have to prepare themselves for a no, strike. No, he didn't. He came way up for me it, instantly. They're, they're just, they're, they just got such power to themselves to be able to do that with not even setting themselves up. Dude, the color on these things, I just can't get over how different they look like. Cause I knew it was gonna, he was gonna look different, but mm -hmm. like you said, it was really gonna be crazy when we actually put them side by side. It was gonna be one of those things. Oh like, yeah. Like the heads, dude, on these guys are, are like so different. It's so cool too. You can really see on this hybrid the the yellow anaconda because of it's trying his, to break through too on the top. You can see. Yeah, you can see. You, Going towards the neck here, you see more yellow, and then by the time you get to his head, he's got the head patterning for the yellow. Yeah. And then when you start scooping down on his dorsals and his sides, his sides it's, are very, very busy, just like the yellows. Where, but the top almost went green. Like yeah. You try or down in the dorsal, down in the farther it reaches of it. Yeah. Very nice and spacious on the greens, and then his are still very compact. Yeah. Mine are like boom, 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 but it, boom. But I mean, it's, that, it's just the beauty of with hybrids and stuff. And it's not like these, are, of course, man does a lot of breeding when it comes to these hybrids, of course. But these are possible in the wild. And it's more rare. I think it'd be harder for this one to exist in particular. Oh, absolutely. As well, it would actually depend, depend on the state of its where it's at in the environment. Yeah, I, th I think, think it's not I that hard technically, no, because no. there'd be more greens mm. around if it was produced in an area where there was greens. Right. And I just think it this one would have a much higher survival rate if it if it was being more subaquatic like the green anacondas because I mean like it's I got said, the best of both worlds almost with the camouflage. Exactly. So I think for uh, especially me just like kind of seeing these guys from how they origin like only knowing the yellow really at first i always kind of notice how the yellow kind of looks a little green to me because i never saw the green but once you see the green you notice that it's really dark dark green inside and of those very greens. mucky yeah looking for the for the very mucky waters of the amazon yeah. and i'd say this guy is like a complete like way color difference i think one of the really interesting thing about green anacondas when you hold them next up to yellow anacondas or even the hybrids is the fact that now, remember they're the only ones 75 percent yeah green 25 percent yellow you cannot forget that because he's not going to be your basic I mean, one of the only parts of a green anaconda that is not yellow or green or black is the orange eyes the the, the orange wings on the eyes I think that's like one of my favorite parts about these snakes. I like their sides, their dots, like the little cheetah prints. Yeah, like show the sh cheetah print off, cause like I thought that was real. I, that's one of my favorite parts about the greens now is the cheetah prints. Sure, you can have a you can have any kind of dark green snake with a bunch of black spots or anything, but what really gives it away on a green anaconda is of course those little leopard prints that they got going on in the bellies. Let's see if I can get a. Yeah, your belly is just so much clean. You see, like, the clean. Mm-hmm. The cleanness of the green versus that hybrid. And the belly almost looks full yellow, besides it's not orange. It didn't get the orange like I thought it was going to, Chase. Like, I really didn't get to look at it that much, but... Right. It's not that orange like my yellow. 
I don't trust you by my face. I already did that mistake the last day. I made a mistake. But this will be really cool, guys. To be honest with you, I should produce a... Me and Chase have been talking about this. We could we could even try to imitate an anaconda ball with both these males on your female. And that is kind of, I'm thinking, I, I would like to make pures, 50-50s, so we have them. Mm -hmm. And then I'd like to get these weird, crazy crosses that we're about to get. Well, and that's a really cool thing when it comes to playing around with some of the hybrid stuff because one one of the many ways you you can be messing with some patternless stuff really quickly and that's something i would love to start seeing more of is the patternless stuff i mean every now and then you see some patternless anacondas move around on pictures and social media but i would love to see more of them I'd love to see what in person oh yeah in the hobby we're so I, these ones that I, I'll produce, guys, should be a 60-40, we're believing. And some of them will appear to be 50-50s, we're thinking. You you could have a huge variety. There, I think your It could go either way. I think it really can go many, many different ways. So I, I could get a 75% yellow. You're just not going to be hitting anything hundreds. No, nothing will be in the hundred or a pure 50-50. They'll be all Is either... It, I'll either have 75% yellow, 25% greens, or no. It'll probably be 60% yellow, 40% green then. But isn't it, like, I mean, as a retic guy yourself, Joe, I mean, the the Jaguars and retics, aren't they basically, like, don't they carry 25% of berm because they're bred to, uh, or is that jungles or whatever? That's, so jungles. So when you get into the jungle game. You're talking, you got a bad eater, you bred that bad eater back to either a retic or a berm, so you're going to create that 75% animal. Mm -hmm. Whether it's 75% Burmese, 25% retic, 75% retic, 25% berm. berm. That's how they're getting these crazy combos, guys, in these hybrids. Because they're taking them and then long-term breeding them and getting these really pretty lion-bred animals out of it. Like the uh, Sal Daddy's produced a... A mochaccino jungle. And it was beautiful. It's one of the craziest animals I've ever seen in my life. So this is going to unlock some new things, hopefully. And down the line, we're hopefully to produce some 50-50s, some 60-40s. We're going to have to shoot again for the Bolacondas. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to have to run that back again. Now that we got some males. Mm -hmm. We got some males to play with. We can get some female boas on the cheap and uh, kind of mm -hmm. see what we can do. I think that'll be our better way to do it. He's got a thing for you, but I'm over here minding my own business. He does got a thing. He wants to bite the shit out of me. I told you, man. Intense IQ levels of these guys. <laughs> He's smart. He's cool, too. I want him to chill out. I want him to be friendly eventually. Jay at Prehistoric Pat said that these things were the worst thing ever for me. <laughs> the hybrids. The hybrid anacondas. He said they're just mean. <laughs> he said they are. And my 50-50 was mean, too. He, he tried to bite me a few times. Mm-hmm. 